the main things I will, the main concepts or themes that I will talk about today are, first of all, I'll introduce this idea of a bottom-up hole. This is, I think, a fairly intuitive and natural idea, and I want to just baptize it with this term so that I can use it later on. Second, I will say something about why I think we should be pluralists about emergence and how to be a pluralist about emergence. One of the parts of being a pluralist about emergence is also, I think, to be pragmatic about emergence. So I will say something about what that means and give you some examples of how a pragmatist would also be a pluralist about emergence. And I will spend most time talking about what I call weak emergence, although I will also say something about some other kinds of emergence, too, to illustrate this point. And I will end by trying to suggest to you what I think the constructive next steps are. So, let me start by saying something about bottom-up holes. And I use um, that little picture on the left there just to suggest, it's just a, a picture to suggest that, well, we're talking about, we're talking about bottom-up holes. The issue is what's the relationship between a hole and its parts? So here's a picture of something, not anything in particular, but it has a number of cells, and I will think of those as the parts. And the whole will be some larger pattern involving those parts. There's not any particularly interesting pattern right there. But, so that's just a mnemonic to suggest we're talking about holes that are made up out of parts. So a bottom-up hole is a special kind of hole. So let me tell you what it is. It's a hole which has, uh, well, it's bottom up in four crucial respects. The first is that the material of the whole, the stuff that it's made up out of, is nothing but the combination of the materials of its parts. So if there were some hole in that picture, the stuff that it's made up out of is nothing more than the stuff that the parts are made up out of, and the way they're arranged, of course. Okay, so that's one feature. Now, another feature is that the state or the property of the whole is nothing but the combination of the states of its parts. You might, there are various global states that one might observe in a system like that. This one, I say, doesn't have any particularly interesting holes. But if it did, the state of the whole could be described by just describing the states of all of the parts and how they're combined. Furthermore, Sometimes we're interested not in individual states, but in patterns or processes that happen over time. What are those? Those are just sequences of states. And the dynamics or these patterns in states of bottom-up holes are also nothing but the combination of the dynamics of the parts. And the key thing that's driving it all is the fourth clause, which is that the cause of the state and the patterns of the whole is nothing but the combination of the causes of the states or the patterns in the parts. Okay, so that's what I mean by, a, by the term bottom-up hole. Just think of it as a technical term that I've just defined. And um, hopefully the terminology is you know, plausible. It makes sense to call it a bottom-up hole. So first thing to stress is what I've done is define a concept I haven't tried to even state a thesis, much less defend any thesis yet. I'm not claiming that everything is a bottom-up hole, and I won't. I do think that some things are bottom-up holes, like you probably think that too. Um, and a very interesting question is whether everything is a bottom-up hole. Well, I'm not going to talk about that question today. Okay? I'm just going to use this concept. I introduce this concept because it will be, I will need it in a couple key places, and it's just simple to explain it first. Now, bottom up, and this idea of being the whole being nothing but the parts, the combination of the parts, that's a kind of reduction. You often hear the word reduction in these same sort of contexts when people talk about emergence. And so bottom up holes are, you know, the material, the state, the patterns, the dynamics, the cause of the whole, those are all reduced to nothing but those same things for the combinations of the parts. That's a kind of reduction. Of course, you know, the people who study reduction know there are lots of different kinds of reduction, and so this is one kind of reduction, one straightforward kind of reduction. It's not the only kind of reduction that one might care about. 
But the reason I stress this is that many people think, I would claim erroneously, that emergence is the contrary of reduction. To show something is emergent, you show it's not reducible. That's a standard way people argue. And, um, but I, I think that that's wrong. So this raises the question, how does emergence fit into these bottom-up holes? At least for those of you who think that reduction and emergence are contraries, this is a question. So I want to turn to that question next.